now stretched a valley called the Valley of the Shadow of Death. It was necessary for Christian to go through it, because the way to the celestial city lay in that direction. Then I saw in my dream an overview of the valley. As far as it reached on the right was a very deep ditch. On the left there was a very dangerous bottomless quagmire. Walking in the dark, Christian was careful to avoid the ditch on the one hand, but the way was so narrow it put him at risk of tipping the other way into the mire on the left. In the same way, if he tried to avoid the mire, without great caution, he found himself on the brink of falling into the ditch. In this way he went on. Now in about the middle of this valley, I observed the mouth of hell. It stood hard against the narrow way. When Christian saw it, he wondered what he should do, because of the flames and smoke that poured from it, not to mention the sparks and hideous noises. These things had no respect for Christian's sword. He was forced to put up his sword and to take another weapon called All Prayer. Christian cried out, O oh Lord, I beg you to deliver my soul. So Christian went on like this a long time as he continued on the way. Yet the flames still reached towards him, while doleful voices continued their unsettling calls, and rushed back and forth to the point that he sometimes thought he would be torn to pieces or tramped upon. Christian made slow progress over several miles, surrounded by frightful sights and dreadful noises. He finally reached a place where he thought he heard a group of enemies approaching to meet him. He stopped. His thoughts raced as he tried to figure out the best thing to do. He played with the idea of turning back, but then again he thought he might be halfway through the valley. He remembered how he had already overcome many perils, and that the dangers of going back might be much more than those going forward. So he made up his mind to go on, yet the fiends seemed to draw nearer and nearer to his location. When it seemed they were almost on him, he cried out with a most fervent voice, I will walk in the strength of the Lord. With that, the fiends drew back and came no further. Just when he came to the mouth of the burning pit, one of the wicked ones sneaked up behind him. It whispered softly into his ear with many suggestive and distressing blasphemies. Christian thought these blasphemies had originated in his own mind, and it troubled him deeply. The thought that he could possibly blaspheme the one who loved him so much weighed heavily on him and tested Christian more than anything he had met with before. When Christian had traveled in this depressed condition for a significant amount of time, he thought he heard the voice of a man on the way ahead of him, saying, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Gladness filled Christian's heart because he gathered from what he heard that others who feared God were in this valley along with him. And since he understood that God was with them, even in such a dark and dismal place, he reasoned that God must be with him also. Finally, the light of morning dawned, and Christian said, He has turned the shadow of death into morning. Christian was greatly encouraged that he had made it through all the dangers of his solitary journey so far. He could now see these dangers, though he feared them more than ever because the light of day exposed them. From the place where he currently stood, he could see that throughout the remainder of the valley, the way was full of snares, traps, gins, and nets. Along with that, the depths were so full of pits, pitfalls, deep holes, and unsafe ledges that if it had been dark now, like it was when he came to the first part of the way, even if he had a thousand souls, they all would have been lost. But as I said, the sun was now rising. Then said Christian, his lamp shone over my head, and by his light I walked through darkness. And so, in this way, Christian made it to the end of the valley, walking in the light.